Hey everybody, I'm Amanda with DevExpress and welcome to What's New in VCL 19.2 presented by DevExpress CTO Julian Bucknell. In today's session, you'll see new features like scroll bar annotations, the hamburger menu, and calculated fields using an expression editor. This session is being recorded and it will be made available on our DevExpress YouTube channel later today. And we will also do a live Q&A at the end of this presentation. Just type your questions in the GoToWebinar control panel at any time throughout the broadcast. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. I will now hand things over to Julian. Thank you, Amanda. And welcome, everybody, to what's new in version 19.2 for the DevExpress VCL subscription. Uh, there's quite a bit to get through. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to throw up first my usual reminder, shall we say, um, strictly speaking, our VCL subscription is for RAD Studio 2010 or later only. Anything earlier than that, sorry, we don't support you. And there's a couple of caveats in there for uh, C++ Builder and our rich edit control. But 2010, next year is 2020. That's a 10-year-old compiler and IDE. Yeah, Embarcadero have added a few new features to the IDE, uh, to Red Studio and to Delphi. So I, my recommendation is to upgrade. Um, I can't say how long the team are going to hold me back for me to make a decision that we're only going to support XE8 or above or something like that. So be warned. Uh, my recommendation is to use Red Studio Rio 10.3.0. Well, it's 10.3.3 at the moment, uh, but certainly Rio is the one to aim for. So, BCL 19.2, Rad Studio, Rio, please. There's quite a few things to get through here. Uh, the new controls and features for version 19.2. Uh, we have, uh, for the grid, an ORM-based tree view. I won't be able to show you very much of that. I can show you a, a demo, but I'm not going to be doing any uh, programming uh, in this particular uh, What's New webinar or anything like that. Uh, for the grids, we've uh, added calculated fields, uh, scroll bar annotations, an extended search facility. Uh, we have a new hamburger menu, as Amanda mentioned, and a formatted label control. I'll be showing you all of those. Uh, the layout control, a few enhancements there, uh, spreadsheet right to left language support, which is kind of cool, actually. Uh, schedule enhancements, and um, basically there's a whole bunch of performance enhancements across the board. Uh, my recommendation is definitely to upgrade to 19.2. And before somebody laboriously types the question into their question box, when is it going to be released? It's either going to be tomorrow or Thursday, hopefully. Uh, the team are, um, A, on this webinar, and B, doing a lot of last-minute work um, testing and polishing and making sure the installers all operate correctly for all of the various IDEs and all the rest of it. So uh, it's very, very close. Uh, let me put it like this. Uh, the demos I'm going to be showing you uh, were given to me this morning. So, yes, it's, uh, it's that last-minute polishing. I'm sure you're all very aware of what it's like when you're ready to release a new version of your application. So, without further ado, let's jump straight in to some demos. So here's the standard VCL uh, demo center, and I'm going to start off with the grids. Now, when I say grids, um, I'm basically going to talk about them as a trio. So there's the, the grid we all know and love, as it were, um, the standard grid, the very first control that DevExpress created uh, for uh, Delphi way back when in 1998. And uh, it's obviously changed an awful lot since then, uh, Express Quantum Grid. And by grid, I also mean the tree list. Uh, it's a specialized type of grid for us. And also the vertical or property grid. That's another uh, grid uh, variety that I'm going to be talking about. So all of our grid-based controls, 
grid, tree list, vertical grid, can contain cell values, references fields, that are defined by an expression, a calculated field. Now, these fields are basically tied to unbound columns or rows and use formulas written as string expressions. These formulas can include any number of other fields, constants, operators, even a whole set of other functions. And even better, using the expression editor, as we got here, let's look at discount amount. Uh, users can actually tweak these expressions or formulas. So let's have a look at this. The expression editor is come up now here we are and we're looking at the discount amount value so let me just move this out of the way uh, where's the discount amount there we are so here we have a 15 percent discount and the actual amount of discount as a dollar value is 222.60 and here's the formula that actually calculates that in other words unit price times quantity times the discount and divide the discount by 100 because it's as a percentage here so here we go let's um let's give our users a little more discount because it's cyber monday well it's not cyber monday maybe cyber tuesday how about that give an extra four percent uh discount so whatever discount is there plus another four percent discount hit okay and notice the formulas being calculated at runtime and being displayed there um so 14 times 12 times the 4% discount, which I just gave everyone, uh, is 6.72. Another interesting one is, let's have a quick look at the total here. The total value is using the calculated value for the discount amount field. So calculated fields can use other calculated fields to do their calculations uh, in the expression itself. Uh, the formulas are actually calculated by the underlying expression evaluator engine from our spreadsheet control. So we know it works. It's been fully tested for several releases now. And we can provide a myriad of functions, let's say financial functions here, future value. This is going back to my uh, early days when I was programming for a bank. Um, you know, uh, myriad of functions. If your users are basically familiar with spreadsheets, they're familiar with these functions. Math and trick. Oh, that's going back to my uh, my degree and all that kind of stuff. Informational, logical. If they're familiar with spreadsheets, they'll be able to apply the same knowledge to our grid to create uh, expressions and thereby calculated fields within the grid. So calculated fields. Next item are scroll bar annotations. Now, imagine the following scenario. Your app displays a grid, lots of records, quite a few, and some of these rows, records need checking, maybe they need fixing, maybe something along those lines. How do you get your user's attention to look at them? Do you have to force your user to scroll through all these things? Oh, I'm doing a search as well here. Um, enter scroll bar annotations here's the scroll bar and look at all these blobs inside the scroll bar now i'm sure you've seen this kind of thing in you know, modern applications uh the ide and so on and so forth they're basically colored markers displayed uh within the vertical scroll bar here and if you're using a property grid or a vertical grid it'll be in the, the horizontal scroll bar and um the markers allow the user to visualize uh, where, you know, rows that match search results, for example. So here we're matching a uh, search item for customer. Here we are. And it's uh, this particular annotation here. And as I move the thumb, you can see um, we're showing where the scroll bar annotation is. Uh, relative to the row within the actual panel itself. So rows with validation errors, that's another good one. Here's a validation error, it's just this uh, little dot here. There's another couple, few dots down here. So as you can see, uh, immediately, um, I don't have to go through here and you know try and spot the rows in error. I can just grab this and go, what's going on down here? Oh yeah, dum dum dum. Any focused or selected rows? We'll look at those selected rows in a minute. And you can even 
do some kind of custom data for your particular application and include things like hints. So if I go here and I hover uh, here, for example, so I'm showing or we're showing in the demo uh, the hint uh, that is you know, causing an error uh, or some kind of validation error anyway. Um, so you can you click away on your 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 scroll bar and or you can drag um, your thumb uh, over the annotation for the where you want to uh, you know take a look. So a quick look at selected rows because uh, what we've done here is to allow you to mess around with the style of the annotations within the scroll bar. So let's choose a really horrible color uh, for selected. Well, choose bright pink the alignment um well let me select a few rows here there's a row yeah, do a control click uh, there's another row over here so we have three rows selected here and as you see we have three dots or markers in this horrible pink alignment means um because we're we're both talking about um you know vertical and horizontal uh, near is near the grid so you see it's nearer the grid or far is you know, center in the middle. Um, client means just the whole width of the or height of the scroll bar. And you can mess around with other features as well. So the width of the, um, the blob, the marker. So you can change that as well as the height. Oh, make it really stand out. Anyway, so yeah, just basically showing the kind of things you can change within the scroll bar annotations for your particular application. Now, our Grid Trio now offer a unique search mode option. So let me quickly find the Find panel. And um, so what we're doing here, let me just change this a little bit. We're searching for uh, Anna. And what we're doing here is we're showing all of the records now, which have, you know, A, N, A uh, as part of the, uh, somewhere in the record. We're, um, where are we? Yeah. Um, the other thing is, you know, we turned on scroll bar annotations so we can see where these records are. So if I change this to um, like man, and it's also going to have the, um, a TR in that particular uh, record as well. So manager Strasbourg and we have manager Centro and so on and so on and so forth. Germany and administrator. So as you can see, scroll by orientation to make it really easy now to actually find these things. And one of the features we had before was a, a filter. So we're just showing the, um, the uh, records which actually uh, match that particular search item. Even better, let's go back to the search. Um, you can search in group rows. Let me uh, group by uh, title here and turn that on. And this time I'm just going to say, you know, search for something which has MA in it. And we have these uh, grouped rows uh, with this particular um, search criteria. So Great new feature uh, for searching uh, within our grid trio. So it applies to a tree list and vertical grid as well. Uh, that's it for the moment for grid. So let me just close that one off. Next, let's have a good look at the new hamburger menu. Apologies, this appears on the wrong screen. Um, let me just close the hamburger menu. This is a hamburger menu. I'm sure you've all seen one either on the web or in other applications. The hamburger menu is denoted, if you like, by the, the three horizontal bars here, which quote unquote, look like a hamburger. I, the hamburgers I eat don't look like that. Anyway, no, 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 no. So new VCL hamburger menu. So there's a three um, bar icon down here are the icons which apply to whatever I'm showing on the rest of this particular screen. Uh, so for example, when I click on one of these high level uh, menu options or icons, it, it flips a panel uh, over the top of my underlying um, grid here. 
and we have various you know options that I can select from that or I can expand the hamburger menu and notice when I I say that we are actually expanding the panel that the hamburger menu appears in and shrinking in this particular case the grid so close it we expand the uh, space for the grid and open it we also contract the space for the grid and so here we're seeing uh, the hamburger menu showing you know we have high level items so it's like a, a tree list form of a menu so we're high level then the individual uh, sub items if you like or sub options for each of these major uh, menu options and notice also you can add to the hamburger menu these um, icons down here sort of icons of different modes of the application so it's like you have with for example Microsoft Outlook so at the moment I'm showing the contact list um, but I can select say the scheduler view so we have the scheduler view notice when I did so the menu or the uh, tree menu here uh, changes obviously items here options here show um, tasks that are valid for this particular display and notice when the hamburger menu is shrunk uh, they just become icons and I can just you know switch from um, item to item and there's also a you know a a set of settings to go along with the hamburger menu so the hamburger menu um, great fun oh notice by the way we're, we're using SVG icons here uh, none of that trying to work out the DPI setting and you know which particular icon you're going bitmap icon you're going to display no these are SVG icons um, all over the place we're using SVG now uh, another part of the VCL um, um, library, basically. So that was the hamburger menu. Let's uh, jump over to the new um, option now. Uh, the uh, new control, I should say. Uh, the DevExpress Express Editors Library now ships with a formatted label control. Let me bring the uh, demo up. What this allows you to do is to display text formatted via a simple BB code inspired markup. So BB code, simple explanation, it's, it's a markup language, much like HTML, but way, way, way simplified. It's used in many message boards and forums to format messages and posts and so on. It's basically simple to learn and simple to use and you won't have to worry about your users pasting in some kind of dodgy HTML. So here we are, um, a markup, uh, this is a markup editor here, uh, the markup basically and this, what it looks like is going to be up here, so bold questions, turn off bold, visit our, and we have a URL, um, Let's just mess around a bit. Let's do this. And I'm going to change this to say, well, I don't like Tahoma. Maybe um, let's use Calibri instead. And make it something like that. OK. And so it becomes very easy using the markup editor that we supply to, to play around with um, the, uh, the markup. And you can see what the the result is going to be the following format options are available you can change font face style and size as i've been showing you just now uh, you can change the colors of the foreground and background um, subscript superscript and uh, hyperlinks the other you know fab one is i kind of like you can either you, can, you don't have to use the the markup editor or the the icons in the markup editor to you know create your uh, your text or um, your formatted text, I should say. You can just basically type what you want. So I want our hour to be in italics, for example. So I, I just happen to know it's this. It might be a bit easier. Oops, I can't type. There we go. I certainly can't type. There we go. <laughs> You wouldn't believe I've rehearsed this. So visit our support center. So you just typed it in. You don't have to use the, uh, the special stuff. Um, 
the, the interesting one for me is um, let's change this to the cat sat on whoops on the mat and typed let's make mat bold so here it is bold I'm going to take this whoop, the whole thing like so copy it so type that but imagine you're actually writing some help documentation of how to use this and there we go the no pass tag stops the um, the formatting for whatever's inside those particular tags so we've got um, unbound data aware standalone in place versions of the formatted label uh, unbound version includes a design time WYSIWYG editor as well which I, uh, for bi-directional bi-directional um, right uh, RTF to markup uh, conversions so you can type it in RTF or you can switch over to the the markup and then type that um, note also that we've replaced the rendering engine used for rich text formatted content with the formatted label this new formatted label uh, this change in removes this dependency on the VCL rich edit control. If you remember one of my previous slides, I said basically for the rich edit control, you've got to use XC plus, um, Red Studio XC plus. Well, we by using this particular uh, formatted label, we can remove that dependency from say the VCL spreadsheet control and our data export methods, and basically allows you to reduce the overall application size and memory consumption. Rich edit control is one hefty beast. So that was the formatted label. Next one is, um, well, it's, it's kind of fun. It's one of those wow things. You either need this or you don't, but it's still pretty wow. Here's our spreadsheet control with the new right to left support. So here we're showing an Arabic uh, uh, based spreadsheet or worksheet, I should say. And uh, our right to left support um, is for UI elements uh, as well as the worksheet content. But also we've added an option to switch the direction of individual worksheets. You don't have to create a spreadsheet and it just has to be right to left within that spreadsheet. Uh, you can apply the right to left characterization to individual worksheets. So if I select the other worksheet, uh, we switch back to the normal left to right, the normal, sorry, <laughs> this is uh, the uh, European American left to right uh, version rather than, say, the Arabic version. So that's the spreadsheet control. One major new feature um, that I can just briefly show you the end result of is our new ORM-based table view for the VCL grid. So this new view leverages our Express Entity Mapping Framework. So let me bring up the demos for the um the grids and this leverages our ent express entity mapping framework emf as we call it so and it's uh, superior data management capabilities like server mode views um, view executes uh, data aware operations on the database side allowing you to display large data sets of blazing fast speeds and all that kind of stuff and we support data editing and um, oops, apologies. Uh, large data sets that uh, supports data editing and master detail layouts. And we also include a new data source component that binds the view directly to an entity. So here's the entity model for this particular demo. Uh, we have a data source of categories uh, with a products collection array in it. And that's a zero to um, a one to many um, selection of products. And uh, if you notice, we're showing you the actual model here uh, within the demo. The category ID goes to the categories and product selection go to the products. Um, and yeah, we have a master detail um, look and feel uh, to this particular ORM view. So this is. 
uh, based entirely on our EMF ORM. And uh, another point I should raise here is I'll warn you that the new feature is still marked as being in beta. Uh, by all means, you know, take a look. Uh, once we uh, release the product, take a look, but be aware that we're still polishing and adding features to the EMF table view. Uh, what else is new? Uh, layout control, we've added a new checkbox and radio button items as lightweight replacements for the standard VCL or even our own DevExpress checkbox and radio buttons. Reason for this, uh, because of our optimized painting algorithms for the layout control, uh, these new layout items improve load times uh, when compared to using the uh, standard embedded controls. Uh, painting is basically something like seven times faster. And to help with being able to use these uh, new layout controls, we've added a design time dialogue in the IDE that help you convert embedded controls that you have existing uh, in a form uh, to their built-in counterparts. Scheduler, set of performance improvements for scrolling and navigating through the various views, and a set of minor enhancements with regard to the use of the views themselves. Uh, see our what's new for more detail. Um, here's how to get to the what's new. Uh, here's devexpress.com. If you scroll down a little bit, version 19.2, what's new in 19.2, and let it reload the whole thing. And there's an item for VCL. And if I click on VCL, there we go. You can see all the details of what I've just been showing you, essentially, uh, within the uh, what's new um, pages for VCL. And finally, we've been making even more improvements with regard to our DPI awareness uh, features. We've now added per monitor DPI awareness version 2 support to our VCL products, to our utility applications, and to the demos for native Windows style. Basically, it allows UI elements to scale differently based upon the DPI factor applied to the relevant display monitor. So for example, here I have three monitors attached to my, my laptop. Well, one of them is the laptop's monitor and all the rest of it. And uh, if they were using different um, resolutions, we could actually repaint um, our UI controls according to which monitor they were appearing on. And if I drag the application window to another monitor with a different resolution, they would get repainted. New feature is available for Windows 10 systems, which are on build 1703 or later. And that's uh, all I really can show you for the VCL uh, side of things. Um, so let me come back over here. A quick bit of extra news. Now, although we've been, as you've seen, concentrating a lot on improving our VCL offering over the past six months, we've also found some time, don't know where, uh, to continue adding to and polishing our FireMonkey controls. So here's a quick montage um, that we created the current demos that we have for FireMonkey running on a Mac. Briefly, what we have so far is um, the grid support is, the grid supports editing, appending, inserting, deleting rows, uh, records, I should say, uh, can show a master detail relationship. So uh, that's the middle one here, for example. Uh, have normal table view, layout type view. Uh, so layout type view here. Um, grouping and sorting, so here we have grouping by product name on this particular demo. Um, the in-place editors we have so far include the text edit, memo, numeric currency, image, date edit, as we can see here, date edit, and uh, the checkbox edit. Now, all I can say about this at the moment is that we're working hard to get it ready for a first beta. And... As you can see here from the montage, it's getting really close. And it's going to be in the new year. It's not going to be before Christmas. So enjoy your Christmas and the new year. Uh, sometime in January, maybe February or something like that, uh, we'll be re releasing the first version of our Farm Monkey uh, control set. 
I'll be writing a blog post to announce it when it is ready and ready to download and ready to play with. So with that, thank you very much. And uh, let me uh, welcome Amanda back and see what kind of questions the team has been able to answer. Um, well, we have one question. I don't know. It's uh, SVG icons. Yes. Any more items being planned that you know of, Julian? Uh, not that I know of. It's one of those things. It's like performance improvements. We just keep on adding it to you know, wherever we need to um, add it to. Or are you asking maybe what icons we have? We have a complete set of normal type application icons. I can't remember how many now. It's probably in the hundreds. Um, but it's, you know, if we're missing, if a particular control is missing or uses icons and is missing SVG support, then, you know, I presume it's going to get fixed pretty well uh, immediately. Okay, and then another question from Mike. Can you click on the scroll bar annotation and have the record pointer move to that row in the grid? In Ooh. other words, without dragging the scroll oh, bar. Oh, see, right. Um, yes. Um, hang on, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, where are we? Demos, oops, grid. Uh, da, da, da. There we go. There we go. Right. Scroll bar annotations. So, for example, you're saying, well, what's this one here? Yes, I can see what it is. But when I click, um, I suppose we ought to, it appears down here at the bottom and it's selected. That's the one I was um, clicking on. Are I think you, actually. Are you showing something? Oh, sorry. Let me uh, go back to where <laughs> I was. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm being very cautious here, yes. and I, I paused my screen. <laughs> I love it. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let me say, uh, let me click on this particular, no, let me choose one which has an error. Do, 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 do. I can click on this one. If I click on that one, this is the one that's in error, and uh, we're showing the, the item here. Um, yeah, the scroll bar, the scroll bar thumb. Um, it's probably not ideal. Maybe it should be in the middle. But yes, the answer is yes. I can click on that one. And there it is. It's a um, it's a search um, or a row that um, my mind has gone completely blank. A row that satisfied the search criteria for customer, for example. If I jump down here. Here we are, it's selected that one, which is an error uh, or validation problem that I have to look at and so on and so forth. So yes. All right. Well, yeah. Um, that is it for the questions. Okay, brilliant. Well, thank you everybody for um, coming along and listening to what we're doing with regard to VCL in version 19.2, as I say. Um, Stay tuned over the next couple of days. Um, hopefully we shall be releasing tomorrow, but uh, if there's some minor thing that needs fixing, then it might be a day later. But uh, stay tuned and listen up, and we'll be announcing when we release. And thank you, Amanda. Awesome. Thanks, Julian. All right, everybody, like I mentioned before, today's webinar will be available later on our DevExpress YouTube channel. Um, I will post that link in the chat box. And that is it for this one. As the last webinar of 2019, we'd like to wish you a happy holiday season and new year, and we will see you in 2020. Thanks to Julian. Thank you all for joining us. And of course, thank you for choosing DevExpress. Bye-bye.